This instructional companion on 2D beams falls under the major topic statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinate statics and indeterminate statics. The chapter on determinate statics contains a, a, a lot of topics, force systems and vectors, distributed forces, an instructional companion on that, we call it distributed loads, equations of equilibrium, which we're going to cover here, types of reactions, which is in another instructional companion uh, called 2D reactions, special members, which included uh, two force members, an instructional companion, determinacy and types of beams, which was an instructional combined instructional companion called determinant beams, free body diagrams, we'll certainly have that here, 2D equilibrium again, couples, hinges, pulleys, that's another instructional companion, axial members, trusses, method of joints and sections, zero force members, again another instructional companion, catenary cables, and 3D equilibrium. We've been following this 2D beam for quite some time. Uh, this is the beam that was used in the distributed loads uh, instructional companion. Uh, we also talked about uh, types of beams and determinacy. We used it and finally came down to the decision that, well, we needed to get rid of some of the un, um, unknown reactions. We had six on the example. We needed to get rid of three. So we decided, uh, well, let's make this a simply supported beam. So we made uh, left A as a pin and uh, got rid of uh, B and made C a roller. So now we have a simply supported beam. Uh, now what we have to do is draw the following free body diagram. We've already come up with or replaced the distributed loads by three separate distributed loads, a triangle, a rectangle, another triangle at particular distances. So let's show all that um, uh, together here in, in the following free body diagram. Okay, from the uh, distributed loads uh, instructional companion, uh, we found uh, F, this was uh, labeled F1, and I think this was F3, because that was the triangular, and over here, here's F2, the rectangular. So we had a 1,200-pound uh, load, a 900-pound load, and an 1,800-pound load. Those are all uh, squiggles, because again, uh, they're, they're representing the distributed load. I uh, have to put them back. You can only do this to find the reactions that we have at uh, AX and AY and CY. you got to put them back in order to find anything else. And we located those from all from A, 16 feet, 36 feet, and 42 feet. So the, the question is now, what, uh, what, would have, well, what would have been the MEPE exam question? And I'm assuredly uh, or assured that it would have probably been to find uh, either AY or CY, not both. Uh, you don't have time for that. And uh, the easy one is to find CY because you would just take moments at A. Remember our coordinate system, let me put it over here, I guess. Our coordinate system is X, Y, and moment uh, counterclockwise. And so if we'd taken moments uh, at A, we would get CY. So that's why we uh, found all the distances uh, from A. Uh, but uh, one of the, well, I wouldn't say trick, but uh, in order to find out whether you really know what you're doing, uh, let's find AY where you would want to uh, take moments at C over here. So, uh, but that would really require another free body diagram in which we have all the distances measured from, from uh, C instead of from uh, A. But we'll do it uh, this way first. So uh, let's go and kind of run out of room here uh, in order to do it. We could do, though, uh, one thing is over here uh, deal with the first equation of equilibrium, the sum of the forces in x equals 0. Uh, essentially, what we have is that ax equals 0. Can't get rid of it. Um, uh, can't change it or leave it off. We just hit zero for this particular loading. If you had something that had a horizontal component, then it would jump into the game and, and respond to that. Uh, but we're really going to look at really two moment equations, and we're going to do that on the next page. Okay, to summarize again the questions, if you were to find a y, and I think that's the, uh, the most likely uh, one for the uh, ME 
uh, PE exam and we're going to do that second because we've already got all the distances measured from A. So uh, let's go on and do the second part here to find C you would do uh, the sum of the moments about A. So let's let's do that first and I'm going to write all that out uh, looking at uh, the different terms here. We can go back over here and then I'll write them all down. If you want to take moments at A then uh, what we've got is put your finger at A. We've got uh, the 12, the 900, and the 1800 pound force all produce negative moments again according to the counterclockwise and then see why uh, will be a positive moment and we don't have the, the dimensions there on it uh, on the free body we don't need those because we can go up here and add 24 and 36 and get 60 so that's what will be reflected in the following equation so again writing this out to save YouTube time uh, we've got the three forces. Again, they're all negative. 1,200 times 16 feet, 900 times 36 feet, minus 1,800 times 42 feet, and then the positive moment of CY times uh, 60 feet. Okay, so what I do is the following um, algebra. I do algebra first, then arithmetic, and then check. Well, I'll do algebra and then uh, check units and then do the arithmetic. So let's do that in a few steps here. Okay, so what I do is I uh, take all the terms that I know. Now, of course, I could go in and start multiplying all this out, but it's easier to kind of see everything here uh, with the 1,200 times 16 plus the 900 times 36 plus the 1,800 times 42, all divided by 60. And uh, so there's actually another interim step that I do. I then multiply everything out, uh, get the number 127,000. Uh, 200 foot pounds uh, feet divided by 60 feet. The feet cancel and you get pounds. So I've got the units. Uh, do all that out is now the arithmetic in my calculator and get a number like 2,120 pounds. Okay, for CY. Okay. Okay. Well, now uh, if if you had you know if you were looking for both of them, then you could do uh, this and then use that uh, value for CY in the third equilibrium equation. Some of the forces uh, in the Y direction equal to zero and find uh, um, AX from, I mean AY from that and uh, we can do that and then we'll do the moment equation. So we do everything here in this problem. So if we go back to the original free body diagram, we've got uh, moving left to right, AY is up. 1,200, 900, 1,800 down, those are all negative, plus CY, set all those equal to zero. Well, I've done that here on this page here. And we've already come up with the total is really 3,900. We could do that, so we can just go on and solve uh, that AY now is equal to uh, 3,900 pounds uh, minus CY. Well, we just found that out to be um, uh, uh, 2,120 pounds. And so we end up with is an answer for AY of uh, 1,780 uh, pounds for the other reaction. Okay. But again, in the MEPE, I think you're going to only get one of these, and I, I think what you're going to get is really find AY. So let's redraw the free body diagram and do the sum of the moments about C. Okay, uh, the free body diagram now for uh, some of the moments about uh, C. Uh, we need all the measurements from C. Well, we know the distance to AY is still 60, the difference between those two. But we now needed the new dimensions, and, uh, and so we can find that uh, this one is uh, 18 uh, feet here. And the way I got that was it's 60 feet minus the 42 feet that we had earlier for the previous one. And then the 24 feet, well, that's uh, 60 feet uh, minus uh, 36 feet, and the last one, 44, well, that's the 60 feet uh, minus the 16 feet. So using the, num the dimensions that we had on the original free body, we can come up with the dimensions on um, uh, this one for the, the other moments, okay? So now let's, I'm going to write out then the, um, the moment about C. Well, now if you put your finger over here, uh, looking at counterclockwise, uh, AY is a negative, so we'll have a negative AY times 60, but then all the three uh, forces, the 1200, the 900, and 1800, all now produce positive moments and set that equal to zero and see what we get here. Okay, so I'm going to do that separately. 
So as I said, we end up with a, uh, a negative moment for a y, then positive moments for each one of those. So as uh, I did with the previous previous problem, I uh, do the arithmetic, uh, the algebra first, solving for a sub y, and then I'll do the arithmetic and, and or the units, and then the arithmetic. So let's do that. So solving for um, for a sub y, we get the three terms again in the numerator. We've got the same forces, but we've got different um, distances, 44, 24, and 18. So all that can be multiplied out. And kind of run out of room here at the bottom of this page. So let's go to the top of the next. And I have a reason for that, because I want to uh, show something uh, at the end. So when you multiply the uh, numerator out, you get 106,800 uh, foot pounds divided by 60, which again, when you do that, you get the answer we got uh, from the sum of the forces in the y, uh, 1,780. Uh, and again, the reason I leave all these breadcrumbs is that if you get an answer and uh, it's not one of the four, then you've got a lot of breadcrumbs to go back and try to figure out, you know, where you have a mistake. You don't have it all built into your uh, calculator function. So I don't know, that's just uh, something uh, for me. Now, you're sort of done here, but um, when I teach statics, uh, uh, and you're doing a problem um, on your own, then uh, the following is appropriate. What I what I have called it a balance-free body. Kind of went through a lot of names uh, over the years, but uh, I've settled on one that actually a student recommended probably 20 years ago. I hate to say that, maybe 25, and I've liked that, so I've used it ever since. Uh, it's called a balance-free body diagram. So let me draw that, and I'll tell you why uh, after I get it drawn. Okay, here is what I refer to as the balance free body. Uh, you go back and start and put the distributed load back. Uh, we can't, we don't have the, the three separate forces anymore, the 100 pounds per foot and the 50 pounds per foot. We put on there the uh, the loads that we found. We don't need to label them anymore um, uh, AX, AY, CY, all of that sort of thing. You can still have A and B on the left of the end, but we, each end of the beam, but that's okay. Uh, but you do this because this is what I refer to as the start of another problem. Okay. It is the start of another problem. Which, in fact, what you're going to do is actually draw this and start drawing lines down underneath this and start drawing the shear force diagram and then below that the uh, moment diagram. Find the maximum shear, find the maximum moment. Uh, then take those and go find the maximum shear stress and bending moment. And from there, you go on to find the deflection. So there's a lot more problems here. And this gives you a chance to uh, verify that, yes, indeed, the um, uh, two forces add up to the total 3,900 up to the 3,900 down. Uh, you can check this because you don't want to do uh, any more without uh, making sure this is uh, correct. Okay? Again, I invite you to visit my website, www.drtomsclassroom.com.